let's put it straight, you know yeah. what I mean? We weren't going there for the music, we were going there for any other yeah. thing, right? Yeah. And we went in there and white people and Indian and Chinese and Asians and people looking happy mm. because, you know, I mean, them times I was going to places like Taurus blues parties and Smarlux and stuff like that in South London. And, mm. you know, you step on man, yeah, yeah, you're, you, trouble, you, yeah. you, you're getting, you know, you're in trouble yeah. or you're looking at somewhere. We had a little pun yeah. and whatever. So so no one was actually happy to be there. It was just... <laughs> <laughs> we were. Right? Are you having a good time? <laughs> <laughs> you stop it. You stop it. Killer, killer. Podcast. <laughs> KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com Beatbox created. We need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Cowboy podcast. Hold that thought. And the same ending. Hold that thought. Like, Hold that thought. We're, we're definitely getting to this. You know, just go on the Wikipedia. You'll <laughs> <laughs> find this all. Right, you don't right, need right. to ask me this again. <laughs> I'm right, we're going to get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Cowboy podcast live and direct. Central London or as central as you need to be. Choose to be. Want to be. You don't want to be anywhere else. Believe that. Big shout out to all regulars. Big shout out to strainstation.co.uk. Hold tight, pirate.com. 24 7 music, podcasts, and dance studios all across the UK. NoPolandRecords.com. All affiliates, people sharing and caring, and all that business. Anyone that's got the television app, you know what it is. It's the home sport and street culture for music and, uh, yeah, and the art forms. The art forms that you know and we love. Free download, iPhone, Android, App Store. <laughs> Inside the house. We have a pioneer, a legend, a man way ahead of himself. He's pretty much chasing his tail and finding his own back and he's running past himself. He is so ahead of the game. Whoa. The recordings legend, the mighty DMB's junglist, Brian G. Yo, 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 big up killer, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been a minute we've been trying to get this done, so I'm glad we're here, man. We got him in the house. He's in the house. Now he's in trouble. I, I just wanted to kind of... We, we were just talking before we jumped on camera and there was some, some really interesting pointers that you made about interview styles, people that talk, going in for chats, thinking to yourself, oh, I'm, I've got to repeat myself again. Yeah, Explain that. You know, Explain like, that theory. Because, you know, I've been doing interviews and talking to people like yourselves. People always want to um, interview me and talk to me and stuff about music and my life and mm. everything. And after a certain amount of times... You feel like you've said that story so much time. <laughs> the beginning is the same as the end. And it's like, God, again? Yeah, you get yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? But I know that for a lot of people out there, they probably wouldn't have heard my story or whatever. Mm. But there's a lot of people that have. Mm. And so um, maybe I'm thinking about the people that have and I'm like, oh, God, do I have to repeat all of this again? Yeah, right. So, I, you know what I mean? I mean, like I said, sometimes i repeat it again in different ways or there might be parts that I've forgotten about or remembered, yeah. you get what I'm saying? So there's always maybe a little twist to it or mm. whatever, but as like I said, you know, the beginning and the end usually is the same, <laughs> yeah, you get yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. like, so I do like sometimes <laughs> people just to do different, uh, different questions or whatever. I know like you guys want to keep on the subject of what I do because mm. that is more important, but you know, um, Basically, I'm saying dig deep. Yes, yeah. <laughs> dig, dig deep. deep. Which yeah. is what we do on a podcast. Dig I, deep. I can imagine this is very similar to the you know the, you know you've got these bands that have to play the same songs over and over. Can you imagine playing a song over and over again yeah. that you fucking hate? You know what I mean? It's there you go. Part of the same process. There you it? go. You know what I mean? I mean, um, you ask stamina MC now to sing over LK. And he'll give you he'll give you one piece of look that just like because <laughs> you know every time probably he's on the mic. He's probably, oh, sing it okay, sing it okay, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever. And yeah, yeah. there comes a time when you're like, you get what I'm saying, mm. you know? Mm. You know those moments <laughs> where you see, you can't hear them, but they're in the crowd and they're lip syncing what you know they're asking you. And in your mind, you're just like, I'm just going to jump over that yeah. board now. That's yeah. why I'm glad I'm not <laughs> an artist in that kind of way as a producer. Yeah. So people can't ask me that. So, you know, I can just lash out brand new beats every time. <laughs> and, like, you know what I mean? End That's, of, you get what I'm saying? Well, this is what we know Brian G for. 
V recordings synonymous in the field of drum and bass and have been for as long as I can remember. This has been a, a, a story. You're not very old, then, are you? No, we are. <laughs> I'm a mere mortal. Every time I'm got you listen, you guys are signing new people, you guys are always constantly moving. You know, this is this isn't just you know, this isn't a it's more than a one-stop shop. This is this is part. Of, this yeah. is a part of the culture, isn't it? And I, you know, and I keep saying, you know, um, you know, because people always like, yeah, Brian, you know, your your achievements is is this and that and blah blah blah. And like, you know, I, I take it, but I keep trying to stress. You get me saying that it's the people around me. You get me mm. saying because you know I'm just like a cog in this. You get me saying, and me and Frost. You get me saying, mm. and mm. like, you know, from the very off, we've had great artists that have made it possible to achieve mm. what we want to achieve, you get mm. what I'm saying? Because, you know, we don't produce or whatever, but one thing about us is, you know, through our musical background and all that, we've we've, we've got a good ear for music and talent, and you get what I'm saying? Mm. And so we've always harnessed that, and, um, you know, that has always helped us, like, you know, I can, I can always see a good artist from before he develops or whatever, uh, you know what I mean? Or, well, not all the time, you get what I'm saying, but... Most times I can take a punt on somebody just from their early stages and think, yeah, you get what I'm saying? Mm. I, you know, I can hear something here. Mm. Just It's rough. It just needs polishing up, developing, working on. But so um, that has been good. But yeah, as I said, you know, from the early days, Ronnie Size, Cross, Die, Dillinger, mm. we've always had great artists around us, Artificial Intelligence, DJ Markey. Yeah, yeah. And, and now we've got some new artists from... Uh, well, from Genesis Brazil, Elijah, and this and, yeah, even Genesis has come on board wow. now and stuff. And you know, we've just always been blessed with you know. And I think the more and more we continue doing what we do, we attract good artists. Mm. You get what I'm saying? People want to be part of something because when something's good, people always want to be a part of it. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that helps as well. When you're doing good, mm. you attract, you know, mm. you attract talent, you attract goodness and stuff. So um, yeah, you know, I, I feel blessed. You get what I'm saying that. I got. I've got a it's question. Like this. I've got a question. I'm not sure if it's ever been articulated in this way because I'm not the most articulative person, as you would understand. Go for it, man. Um, but you began your career. You began your journey um, in in reasonably conventional ways for its time. But now looking on it, it's like wow, like sound system, like from the north. And so, so my my more immediate question is, and it's something people are probably going to be asking themselves, is, do you ever consider? Because, you know, that label, your label is the logo. I can picture it right now. I can picture mm -hmm. the records. You, you don't think that way when you're no, starting. No, no. We like, never, ever think. That's the crazy thing about it. It's like, you know, everybody else talks about what we've achieved. I'm thinking about tomorrow. Yeah. I'm never, ever looking back. You get what I'm saying? And, you know... We never started this label with a big plan or whatever. Like me and Frost, we never sat down and thought like got spreadsheets out and papers and and sort of like in in five years this is where we yeah. want to be and this is what yeah. and achieve or whatever. We just did this because we love music mm. and I was fortunate to be working um within the music industry when we started, just before we started the label. So I managed to pick up a bit of experience by working with Rhythm King Records. Mm -hmm. And um, they gave me a sub-label called Out of Rhythm, which was more the underground part of Rhythm King. You get what I'm saying? Dude, what was that like when you were given that? That must have been quite... Well, you know, <laughs> it, it's all... That's, you know, I didn't even... Them times, it, it wasn't even like, wow, or whatever, because you're just on a journey. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And... You know, I knew this, uh, um, my friend Guy, Guy Moot, um, God rest his soul, he's, de he's yeah, died yeah, now, yeah. right? Rest but in peace. Um, Guy, you know, he was a good friend of mine and um, he was in the music business and he knew people like Dave Lee from Rough Trader, Joey Negro and Simon Goff. And he, you know, he knew all these people that were in music business and stuff and we used to be good friends and all that. And, um, you know, when he got the job at Rhythm King, he just said, come, come join me, you get what I'm saying? Because he knew that I had a good ear for music and whatever. So he said, come and join me and come and like help me out down there. Mm. And at that time, I was doing stuff like club promotions. I don't even know if those roles exist anymore. But what club, club promotion entailed of was like just basically dealing with all radio, club DJs, um, them times you had records and all that. So yeah, the pirates as well. Yeah, 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 pirates, and you'd mail them out, you get Vital. all the DJs. So them days, it wouldn't be just like... Um, uh, you send it out on email now, records. You'd have to mail them out, you'd have to put them in mailers yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? That was my job to like, 
the records would come in and then the mailers would get the mailers and then like I'll put them records in the mailers and then I'll have to put them in a big post office bag and then the postman would come send them out and then I would keep a few promos and go places like Rage or wherever Fabio and Groove Rider or Sir Randall or whatever certain DJs and I'd bring them TPs or whatever. Yeah. So that was basically my job and like um, it kind of turned into more sort of a bit of a and r in as well. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Because... I was a DJ at the time in, in Rhythm King and it was a real commercial setup. Like you had Betty Boo, Bomb the Bass and all yeah, these kind yeah, of things yeah, going yeah. on down there, right? You know, you and know, um, S Express and all that kind of stuff, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, um, and then there was just me, this guy, this dread, uh, long dreadlocks yeah, them yeah. times and yeah. I was DJing and playing this acid. Them times it was like acid house, yeah. hardcore, early, early pre-jungle, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Just kind of like, you had yeah. things like um, Shut Up and Dance yeah. doing their thing and whatever. So that was the pre-early days and stuff. And Shut Up and, you know, at the same time I'm working with Guy, we had a in-house company called, oh, I forgot the name of it now. But what it was, was mailing out records to DJs as mm -hmm. well. So like, if you had an independent company, cause we had a really good mailing list, people would come to us and say, can you mail out our records for us? So Shut Up and Dance used to come to us. We used to mail out their records. Before and these DJ promo pools, that was the deal, right? Yeah, yeah, they used to, as soon as yeah. they get the press the records, like, Raga Twins De Bolt and yeah. all the, you know, Raving and Raving and all these yeah, tunes, yeah. they used to come down to our office and big boxes of records, like, like 400 records and, mail them out to the DJs and I'll take some to the clubs or whatever and stuff. And, you know, there was all, you know, Johnny L, Urchie Soul. Mm. I mean, we, we mailed that out. Daddy Freddy, things like that. Oh, that yeah, 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 yeah. And um, them time that we was mailing out people like um, Rebel MC, yeah, Double yeah. Trouble yeah, yeah, yeah. and all these kind of early stuff. You get them mm. saying people used to come to us and oh, I'm trying to remember the, um, the company that we used to call ourselves. And so that's what we did. So I was getting all these early, mm. early you know what I mean? Early promos and early but stuff. But you were also and, on the cutting edge of things that were happening. So that was, a, you heard of Home for the Vantage, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, um, you know, that, you know, and I did things like, early, you know, well, uh, like Dave Angel, my friend Dave Angel, like he started to make music and stuff like that, and I managed to um get him hooked up with RNS because we did a we did a deal with RNS Records in Belgium, mm. and so everything they released we released in the UK and we call it RNS UK. And was that reciprocated? So over there you'd be sending British stuff over there. No, it was just one way. It was right. just because. That, that Belgium sound was so hot at the yeah, time. Yeah, you had yeah. like um, Energy Flash, Joey Belcham, Outlander yeah. and Diggory Doo and all these big tunes and all that and they were just like blowing up. So And I guess from a European side of things, that was converted in the pop charts with things like um, Wigfield and shit like that. It was just like these influences of the European sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, so, so like, yeah, you know, I managed to hook up Dave Angel, got him on, got him onto RNS and... Um, I remember when um, the Kicks Like a Mule, oh. they sent that track in to us and, um, you know, I, I gave it to the label and I said, what do you guys think? And that time it was really early jungle, whatever, and they didn't get it hardcore. They just mm. didn't get it and they turned it down and then <coughs> XL put it out and it went to number one. Yeah, yeah. out it goes. And um, they kind of like, oh, right, you just pay more attention to what Brian's saying, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> and then I brought them Moby, go. That was like an import I got from Black Market. And I said, yeah, this tune's hot on the streets oh. right now. So they chased that up and they signed it. Amazing. And then it went to number one. We had Whoa. Moby go. And then they were like, yeah, yeah, just keep an eye out for some more stuff, yeah, yeah, Brian. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. get what I'm saying? And, um, and your stakes were raising in terms of... Not really. <laughs> really? No, they weren't seeing you as like the man man? No, nah, they just... Uh, you know what? At the time, I didn't even realize what we would I was doing. I was just like helping out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just just there helping out. I mean I was doing my job and I'll be like, hey, this tune's hot, that tune's hot. Yeah. Go sign it. If they didn't, they didn't if they signed it, I didn't take any no. whatever. And so they gave me my own label called the White Label to run. And um we had a few releases out on that um Congress. 40 miles, I don't know if you know the dun 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 dun
And that's how I kind of met, not met Ronnie, but made the link for Ronnie because there was these guys from Bath and we signed their track called Absolute 2. That's and we, amazing. Um, something to Love, I forgot the track called to introduce to love or something like that we released it on um in the ground yeah we st- in the ground was like the liquid v of v the more so you had out um, outer rhythm and in the ground or something like that which was more of a i'm, gonna, of, I'm gonna get my playlist on the bottom of right this, and this so podcast, um so yeah so so that tunes. came out on we released that and it goes oh some of my friends from Bristol, they're making jungle and stuff like that. You know, I've been listening to them, but I just remembered from kicks like a mule and all like that, Rhythm King wasn't ready, so I just had the tape and I just put it down, mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying? And then like, things kind of took a turn at Rhythm King and they had to make cuts. And so they decided to cut the white label and then eventually they um, they they cut their um, outer rhythm labels and mm-hmm. because they had to make cuts and so I didn't have a job and so I just like left and didn't even, you know, I wasn't really bothered because it was just, you know, another, you know, I was cool about it. It wasn't like, oh, I lost my job or whatever. You get what I'm saying? I was cool. And um, I took the tapes for some weird reason, not just that tape, but loads of demos that were coming because them times tapes and all that, like, people be sending loads inundated. of tapes yeah. and yeah. So I just took the tapes with me and um, we had a meeting one time at our, D- we, we had this, um, we had this uh, DJ sort of collective called Groove Connection DJ Agency run by Sarah Sandy. And this time it was just like the first kind of drum and bass DJ agency that was kind of developed and all that. And you had Groove Rider on there, Fabio on there, LTJ Bookham, Mickey Finn, Jumping Jack Frost. And so I, a big, big uh, roster there, to yeah, say the least. and I was on it as well. Wow. And we started meetings. And so I went to one of the meetings and I brought the tapes and I played some of the music to Bookham. And Bookham was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because I was trying to get some feedback yeah, on the yeah, stuff here. Yeah. And Bookham was just nodding his head off there. And yeah, 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 yeah. I'm into it. So we pressed them up. Me and Frost pressed up the tracks off tape. We didn't even have the dats, right? Wow. We, pressed, we went wow. down to Music House and cut them on tape. So what year was this? Because you guys were the younger guns of this fraternity, about man. Ninety-two, ninety-three, something he, like that. You, I'm right in saying that you guys were kind of youngsters compared to to those guys like Fabio and Groove Rider. You guys were no, the we were all the same up. age. Same age. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, yeah, guys holding youth. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is just what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I, mean, yeah. I just, I yeah, me and um, Fabio is probably the same age as and Groove's probably about a year to or same age as Frost, about a couple of years younger. Yeah. But yeah, we were all the same age. It's weird because Fabio and Groove Rider. They were on a radio station, I'll say about in the 90s, 89, 90, in Brixton called Phase One. Yes, yes. And so you had Fabio, Groove Rider, Booker T, Dave Angel, and all these guys, they were on Phase One. And then you had me and Frost, we was on this radio station called Passion, but it turned into Lightning yes, in sir. Brixton. Right. And I didn't know them guys at the time, you get what I'm saying? But there was a, there was a little rivalry. Yeah, let's talk about the rivalry. <laughs> <clears throat> right, here we, we go. just looked at it as like, them boys over there yeah. and we're over here and I didn't know them to have that kind of rivalry and maybe they didn't really even know see us as a rival you get what I'm saying <laughs> but we were both in the same yeah. you know what I mean and I was aware of them or whatever so there was that kind of like you get what I'm saying how do you we not kn- stop rivalry? yeah like, I impossible. mean I wouldn't say I would. it was a rival but we just made sure that we held up our end and pushed our battle, end or whatever. Battle you get what strategies I'm behind the curtain. <laughs> you him you over just there. want to stir it up, <laughs> innit? You just want to stir it up. What man, a but, golden era. What a uh, beautiful time. Oh, man, it was, it was like, you know, we, there wasn't all these... No one knew what was going to happen next. And it was just all new, you get what I'm saying? So... I think people just didn't take it as serious as they are now. People were just more, you know, mm. relaxed with it. Whereas now, you know, you're thinking about social media, your next move, and you've got management now, and you've got mm. agents, and so everything is more serious now. Mm. You get what I'm saying? You've got record deals, and mm. everyone's got brands now and stuff to look after, and this and that. Whereas mm. before, none Nothing. of that, none of that. So it was just like, let's just go do our thing. You mm. get what I'm saying? And mm. like, you know, it was fun, you get what I'm mm. saying? Because you just didn't know what was going to happen. You, there was no rules. Mm. No rules. We were writing them as we were going along, you get what I'm saying? Making up the rules. As a whole genre. I'm gonna, I am gonna. want to move off uh, the beaten track of conversation, just because we said we would. Um, as a consumer myself, uh, on first sightings, on first impact of Jungle being the force it was, 
And being from a, a little known place in Sussex, you know, you were getting drip fed at these, these visual aesthetics, these things that, and this is why labels and brands suddenly became important because you had these, these physical versions and you needed something that represented it. But then there was this, this um, it was almost like this adaptation of graffiti within the electronic look and feel of, of flyers, for instance. You know, the, the flyers that you'd get and they'd be in tape packs and, you know, dreamscape, you know, X, Y, Z, with all the different kind of vi visual aspects. Did you feel like for, us, uh, for where you guys had started from inception, this, this culture um, and this genre, that it was taking shape in a way that even you as a fan of it and an onlooker would start thinking, to well, this is actually snowballing into something that I, I don't know if I like it, or I didn't expect that to happen. No, um, not really. I mean, you know, I've heard a lot of people all like through this, through my career playing music, especially in um, jungle, hardcore, whatever. And I've always heard DJs say things like, oh, it's not good anymore, I'm not feeling it or whatever. And there has never ever been a year or a time when I have not been feeling the music that I'm in. There's, I'm always been, ex I've never ever thought, my oh God, this is, I'm not feeling this anymore, you get what I'm saying? And like, as far as um, where, where it was going and all that, you get what I'm saying? Of course you kind of, you, you see it developing and all that, but as long, you know, I've always had my feet on the ground, you get what I'm saying? And I've never expected too much from it. Mm. So maybe that's why I've always been cool with it because I've never had big expectations. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I've always been humble and grateful for what it's given me, you get what I'm saying? Because, you know, before the music thing, I was in jail, mm. you know, I was make, in, getting robbing and mm. breaking into places and doing bad things, things that I'm not proud of now, you get what I'm saying? Mm. And things that weren't leading me it, to the right place. But that's all I knew because I came from the streets, you mm. get what I'm saying? And, you know, you know, education wasn't brilliant and stuff, so I had to just do what I could do. And I came to London and, you know, I didn't have nowhere to live. I had to squat and, you know, f find job and you didn't have proper qualifications. And, you know, living in Brixton in the um, 80s, you know, mm. well, you know, mm. riots and all them yeah. things. It wasn't easy for a young black person and all that, you get yeah, what I'm saying? So we all, you know, we all ended up doing things on the streets, mm. which was what everybody else was doing, you get what I'm saying, to survive and all that. So when the music thing come along, I'm just so, I was just grateful that, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I found a path and, you know what I mean, it's managed to, to feed me and clothe me and, and, and give me the happiness and satisfaction that I need in my life to to to, to motivate myself and, and mm. continue because, you know, it's important that you get up in the morning and, and you're happy about what you're doing and yeah. where you are in life, you get what I'm saying? And for me to, at my age, to know that, you know, I know a lot of my friends and they have to get up every morning and do some dumb ass job that they yeah, don't want to do, do, you get what I'm saying, from nine to five or yeah. whatever, you get what I'm saying, and you know, I can do what I love doing, mm. earn a living out of it, and for so long I've been doing that, you get what I'm saying, I feel blessed, so, mm. you know, I'm just, yeah, I'm just happy, and it's only like when I talk to people like yourself or whatever, and you, I'm like, legend, what? you know, I just play tunes, you get what I'm saying, and yeah. you know, I just like, you know, I'm just like you guys, you know. If you go out, I'll be in the crowd. I'm just a raver like yourself, but I'm just so happy to, mm. to, to play music as mm. well and run a label. But I don't see myself as, as, um, as Puff Daddy or, or mm. whatever, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. As this, um, I don't see myself like that. People might say, yeah, you know, what, what have you achieved and all that. But mm. I just, you know, I'm just humble about what we do and I'm just like, you know what I mean, you know. I'm just grateful that I'm in a place where I can do things that can... Like, I got a letter, I, I mean, um, I, was, I do a podcast as well. And, um, yeah, people, he does, we're going to talk about that. And people, and people are, but it's different from yours, it's just music and, and people writing and stuff and email. And I got one last week and just little things like this message from this guy, uh, I'll quickly say what he said, but he was mm. like, oh man, um, man, you changed my life, and I, I was like, "You changed my life because the first time I ever heard drum and bass was um, from a CD called The Sound of Music, Sound of Movement, mm -hmm. and that was my first like 
time I ever heard drum and bass and it was your CD and I stole it from my brother's room while he was at work or something like that. You get what I'm saying? And yeah, so yeah, not stole yeah. it, but I took yeah, it yeah, and yeah. I listened to it while he was at work. And Done si the job. since that day, I've been into drum and bass and you get what I'm saying? So I just want to thank you for it and this and that. And it's those little things that yeah. make me think, okay, wow, you get what I'm saying? That somebody, you know, I've managed to do these things and, you know, inspire people or whatever. Yeah. And for them things there, that just makes me feel like really good. You know what I mean? That I can I, I can put something back because I don't produce or whatever. But if I can help the scene in any other way, which I feel I can, then, you know, I'm going to do mm. it. And whether it be with the label, whether it's been going out and DJing and giving people joy or whatever, mm. or just like making bringing people into the music by it's things what I'm doing, then, you know, I see myself like an ambassador for mm. the music and um, I'm happy with that, you get yeah. what I'm saying? You know, I'm happy with that because I'm helping putting something back into this and helping it to grow and all that. So, you know, that's, that's just, that's, for me, that is good enough, you get what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. you know? I, I, think, I think the reason why people respond to you in such a way, Brian, in the same way, um, they would respond to anybody from from your generation of of DJ culture is because of the adversities and the gratitude that you have even because a lot of people that come from those adversities even now wouldn't be quite as grateful because their circumstances I don't know it's like an entitlement, but you don't have that, and and I think people know in the back of their minds that there really was a struggle in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, I'll come from, on, man. From the streets to the industry to yeah, uh, man. you know, racially, you know, driven, you know, the police, like everything, and that's why I think people respond to you. Yeah, in you, such a you know, I, mean? I had to way. squat. Yeah, you know, I had to eat bread and milk, sweet milk and bread. Yeah. You know, I'm um, calm. Nestles, Nestles milk yeah, yeah. and bread. We used to have that for like. Supper and I still, stuff re like I still that. recommend that to be fair. <laughs> it's, it's wicked. <laughs> it's you get what I'm saying? And we used to make this drink called Sexy, which was basically um, water with squeezed lemon in it <laughs> and sugar. And you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, the real lemonade. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we we had to, you know, make do like things like that. You get what I'm saying? Which I, is hard you know, to think about. It's hard to consider. So, you know, what you mean? know, there was like nine of us living in my house. My, you know, my family, nine of us, and and just my mom yeah. brought us all up. So you know, it wasn't easy and all that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But I never wanted. I never. I, we never was like. We didn't care that we didn't have holidays. You know, like I look back now and I see all these families, and every year they go on holiday. Mm. Holiday? Mm -hmm. We this in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, would be yeah, yeah. maybe we could go on a school trip yeah. with the school. That yeah, was yeah, the yeah. only time we yeah. were going on holiday. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, or, yeah. or trip to Margate or New Forest or something. Yeah, that's with the, and that's with the school. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, my yeah. family couldn't afford. My mum couldn't afford to take us at nine. You, man, you. You're crazy. Yeah, holiday? I, I, went on, I went on a flight holiday once, and that was like as I was leaving the home. I was like, yo, uh, we never did this. And I was yeah, and school. we we never thought about them things either. We didn't yeah. say, oh, mom, I want whatever because we knew our place and. We were happy. We, we had a happy home and all that. You get what I'm saying? So, you, Do you know... Do think it breeds the energy of, of, of a tenacious artist when, when their back's against the wall slightly? Do you know what I mean? Like the working class artists, they've kind of been removed from London slowly but surely. But I think that's what... I mean, I'm not dogging anybody that is, you know, is, we all crave. Mm. But it's, it's interesting how... Um, Sometimes the most aggressive artists are normally the ones that have got in their mind something to either prove or um, give back. Like your mums, you know what I mean? Like it must be in the back of your mind for its time. You must have been like, no, 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 I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm fucking going to do this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, kind of, yeah. I guess um, it's deeper than that, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure if I understand that question. <laughs> well, what I mean is, what I mean is sometimes when you are on your ass. Yeah. There's only one way, and that's looking up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you really have to, mm. you really have to double down and go ten times harder. Yeah, yeah, of course, definitely. Or, you, or you've had it. You yeah. get what I'm saying. You, so you got to, and um, you know, some, some, somehow I've always found a way to do that. You get what I'm saying. You know, and um, yeah. So yeah, I've always managed to like work out. You know, how to move on out of the out of hard times or whatever you get what I'm saying and 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 get out of it but um 
Have you ever had hard times where you've definitely... Saw, I mean, you know, we're talking over a span of, like, what, 40-plus years of, of, of consistent music <laughs> creating. Have you ever had moments where you're just like, oh, this is a bit too much for me and I'm not sure if I'm going to make it through this, this month or this next step of my career or anything? No. Really? You've always had the North yeah. Star on you? Yeah, I've never... Especially since the music, it's just given me that drive, you get what I'm saying? And, like, you know, I've never been a lavish sort of person that needs expensive living, whatever, so I've managed to always get by by doing what I'm doing, you get what I'm saying, and, and comfortably as well, you get what I'm saying, and, you know, I haven't got, I'm, I haven't got high maintenance or whatever, so, you know, I mean, I've always been humble, I mean, you know, I've worked hard now, and, you know, I make money now DJing, and, mm. you know, maybe I could make more, but I'm, I'm just satisfied more with, you know, I'm not one of those person that just, like, demand crazy money and 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 crazy riders and and first class mm. you know what i mean you know put me on a bus if, if i have to get somewhere can i just say, can I just but, say something though? you know just, what i mean just to, just to interrupt that one minute of flow the last time i saw you shamefully the last time i saw you was just before lockdown <laughs> oh, and i can i have it on video that? bro oh. like what was it it was the aerosol party and the last bit of the aerosol. mini doc, yeah, when aerosol clothing, and uh, you know, big up Lecce, you know, and the junglist movement tops, yeah. and, all that. and he had like this, and it was V recordings in the main room, uh, Lecce holding it down. Oh as, yeah, where was, was that party again? <laughs> it was fabric. That was a fabric, innit? <laughs> the last shot of the video was you, <laughs> and you went, yes, yes, can I, can I? and you had this bottle of champagne, and you were like pop, and the just missed the camera, you like, Wait! it was well, gorgeous, but, but can we just hold on? Can we say? <laughs> can we just say right? Going back to me not being high maintained, <laughs> it, it, it was it, it was people. Prosecco. Okay, right? okay, I'll be right with it. <laughs> it was Prosecco, right? I, I, I had to delete the uh, the evidence for uh, production sponsors' reasons. Right. You know, people so, haven't know what so the uh, bottle is. Um, very, very good, very good. I mean, when you do go to a Brian G uh, event, we'll call it. Uh, yeah, the just you're there to serve, man. You're there to party. I mean, this yeah, is, you know, we um, you know. With with V and with movement and all that, we've always had a good following, and 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 um, the vibe of our part is always just because you know what it is as well, probably because like with me and Frost running the label as the head of the label and stuff, you get mm. what I'm saying? We're not producers, so we haven't got like a lot of labels or whatever. They're run by their producers or mm. whatever, and the producers maybe have a style of music how they make music. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So the label kind of reflects on that kind yes. of vibe you get what i'm saying so you know if you if you're a jump pop um artist then and you're you, gonna you, have that kind of thing yeah you get what i'm saying mm. whereas with me and frost we're just music people you yeah, get what yeah. i'm saying and so it's that's few and far between so you know, we don't get that much so that yeah so that's why the label you never know what's you know people used to say oh i never know what's going to come next on v because mm. it could be like a jump pop vibe it could be a liquidy vibe it yeah. could be a dark vibe or whatever because that's what we are. It could be even non D and B. You know what mm. I mean? Because we just like music. You get what I'm saying? Mm. And so we try not to put no restriction on um on what we do. We you know it's just about good music. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And if you know if we can um do that, continue doing that, and um that I'm happy with that. You yeah, get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Going back to the uh, we'll get into movement in a minute as well. But, but going back to the the, <coughs> the ear thing that you mentioned and having a keen ear for what's right. You know, having your feet de deeply rooted in in jungle at its early stages. Like you were saying before, then there was the acid house thing, and you were quick to pick up on particular new records that were coming through its time. You were also really interested in the sound system culture as well, right? Oh man. Yeah. 